In this video, we're going to take the definition of Bronsted Lowry acids and bases that we defined in the last video, and we're going to use it to explore concepts of KEQ, KA, and also PKA, and see how they are important when you're talking about acid base chemistry. So here we have a generic acid base reaction that uses the Bronsted Lowry definition. So HA is our generic acid. It's going to donate a proton to H2O. So H2O is our Bronsted Lowry base. If H2O accepts a proton, H2O becomes H3O plus. And if HA donates a proton, right, so it's, it's left with, uh, if it loses a proton, it's left with A minus the conjugate base, like that. So when the reaction reaches equilibrium, the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate rate of the reverse reaction. And from general chemistry, the position of the equilibrium is described by what's called a KEQ expression, which is defined as the concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants. So if I were to write a KEQ expression for this generic acid-base reaction, I would take the concentration of the products. So I go ahead and put H3O plus times A minus. And I would put that over the concentration of my reactants, which would be HA and H2O. Now the concentration of water is constant. And so you could think about it as just being removed from the KEQ expression. Or you could think about combining the concentration of water with the KEQ to give you what's called a KA expression. Right? So KA expression would have the concentration of H3O plus times the concentration of A minus right, over the concentration of HA, since we've, we've taken out water from our expression. Now the usefulness of a Ka expression, I, I think it's much more obvious when you apply it to an actual reaction. So the one we talked about in the last video, right, had H2O and HCl, where HCl donated a proton to H2O, right? And this reaction is technically at equilibrium, but their equilibrium lies to the right here. So H2O would become H3O plus, right? So it gained a proton. And if HCl loses a proton, it would be Cl minus. And so we talked about the equilibrium line to the right, which would mean that we would get a way more products than reactants. And so if we go ahead and write the Ka expression for this acid-base reaction, right? So let's go ahead and do it. The Ka expression is equal to the concentration of my products over my concentration of the reactants. So for this reaction, the Ka would be equal to H3O plus times the concentration of Cl minus, right? All over the concentration of HCl. And since HCl is a strong acid, right? So since this is a strong acid, the equilibrium lies to the right, which means we're going to get an extremely high concentration of our products compared to our reactants. And so uh, the actual number turns out to be approximately 10 to the seventh for the concentration of my products using my Ka expression over one. So 10 to the seventh over one. So 10 to the seventh is an extremely large number, which again makes sense because HCl is so strong, we're gonna get a very high concentration of products to reactants. And that's what the Ka expression does. It, it tells you, it gives you a relative idea um, about the strength of the acid. And in this case, HCl is very strong. So HCl is strong. We know this just by looking at the Ka expression, getting a value of 10 to the seventh over one. Well, that's a very large number. And usually when you're doing Ka values, you get extremely large numbers or extremely small numbers, which can be kind of annoying when you're, when you're doing math or when you're just talking about the acidity of a compound. So since that's annoying, we're, uh, chemists take what's called the pKa value instead of the Ka value. And especially organic chemists will tend to favor pKa values over Ka values. The way to calculate a pKa value is just like finding the pH of something. So if you remember from Gen Chem, the pH is equal to the negative log of the concentration of the hydronium ion. Right? That's a way of giving you numbers that are easier to work with. It's the exact same concept here. So if I wanted to find the pKa, right, the pKa would be equal to the negative negative log of the Ka, so the negative log of the Ka. So for HCl, we would plug in our number here. So we would plug in 10 to the seventh, all right? So let's go ahead and do that calculation. So if we plugged in 10 to the, 10 to the seventh, the pKa would be equal to the negative log 
of 10 to the seventh, which is equal to negative 7. So you could say that the pKa of HCl is equal to negative 7, which is, again, a number that's easier to work with than 10 to the seventh. And so using, using the pKa uh, way of doing it, you're going to get a range of pKa's of approximately negative 10 to approximately 50. And so all of the compounds that you discuss are, are usually going to be in this range. And so once again, it's just much easier to work with. Now mathematically, the higher, the higher this number is, right, so this number right here, 10 to the seventh, right, the lower the value you're going to get for your pKa. And so that allows you to realize that the, the mathematically, the the stronger the acid, the lower the pKa value that you are going to get. And so conversely, the, the weaker the acid, the higher the pKa value that you will get. So when you're trying to compare two molecules, in terms of acidity, right, if you look at their pKa values, the molecule with the lower pKa value is going to be the stronger acid. So let's go ahead and do an example. Here we can see how to apply this skill. If we took uh, if we took the ethane molecule, right? So ethane would be C2H6. So go ahead and put in these hydrogens here like that. If we were comparing ethane to ethanol, let's go ahead and draw ethanol now. So ethanol is a very similar molecule. The only difference is there's going to be an oxygen and there's going to be Right, hydrogen on that oxygen here. So here are two dot structures. And if we're thinking about the acidity of these two molecules, right, if we look at the molecule on the left for ethane, all of these hydrogens are equivalent. So in terms of donating a proton, I could say that this could be the proton that's donated. When you look at ethanol, all of the, all of the hydrogens are not equivalent. If you think about acid-base chemistry, this is going to be the acidic proton. And the measured pKa values for these molecules, ethane turns out to have a pKa of approximately 50, and ethanol has a pKa value of approximately 16. So thinking about the math, remember the lower, the lower the pKa value, the stronger the acid. And so ethanol is a stronger acid, right? So ethanol is a stronger acid than, e than ethane. In terms of how much, how much more acidic is ethanol than ethane, it might be tempting just to subtract those numbers, right? So 50 minus 16 gives you 34. So you might be tempted to say that ethanol is 34 times more acidic than ethane. But it, it isn't, it's, it's, it's 34 orders of magnitude more acidic than ethane is. So in reality, ethanol is 10 to the 34th times more acidic, which is an extremely large number. And so for all practical purposes, um, ethanol is, 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 is acidic, but ethane is not acidic at all. And again, these are relative values, right? So, so ethanol, Ethanol is much more acidic than ethane, but ethanol is not anywhere near as acidic as HCl is. So HCl is considered to be a strong acid. Ethanol is not considered to be a strong acid. And ethane is not considered to really be an acid at all. But remember, these values are all relative. But these pKa values are, are extremely important, and you'll see them come up several times in an organic chemistry course. In the next video, we'll talk about the difference, uh, the, why this large difference in acidity between ethanol and ethane.